This is section 4.3 and this is on the second derivative and what the second derivative tells us about the graphs of functions. Uh, first of all, we have the concavity test. The graph of a twice differentiable function, y equals f of x, is a, it's either concave up on any interval where the second derivative is positive, greater than zero. Concave up means uh, it's like the regular, like if you're holding a cup, that's concave up. So here's your cup. Concave down on any interval where a second derivative is negative, that means your cup is emptying, so you're pouring the drink out. Uh, so here's concave up, concave down. In example two, we're going to determine the concavity. We're going to use the concavity test to determine the concavity of the given functions on the given intervals. So here we have the old standard, the old parent graph, y equals x squared, and we're going to look at its concavity from 3 to 10. Now we know what y equals x squared's concavity is, it's concave up the entire time. It never turns and goes concave down. It doesn't do that. So we already know that y equals x squared is concave up, but can we show it algebraically using the second derivative of the concavity test? So the first derivative is 2x, and the second derivative is 2, which is always positive. It doesn't matter what value we have they will always be concave up, and that's what we know from the graph. But what if we have a graph where we don't know, or if it would take a little longer to graph this? Well, the first derivative would be cosine of x, the derivative of 3, of course, being 0, and the second derivative would be negative sine of x. Now, in the interval, we can't count 0 and we can't count 2 pi, so we need to find a value in here where the second derivative is 0, where it has no count concavity. So if we set the second derivative equal to 0, uh, of course we can divide by negative 1. That doesn't change anything or, or changes very little. And so sine is 0 uh, at pi, not counting 0 and 2 pi, of course. So x equals pi is where we have no concavity at all. So let's plug in something between 0 and pi into the second derivative. So how about we plug in pi over 4? Or we could even plug in pi over 2. Uh, so we have, uh, let's say pi over 4, we have negative sine of pi over 4, which is uh, negative square root of 2 over 2, the point being that it's negative. So from 0 to pi, that's the point we're looking at where it splits, this thing is concave down. And from pi to 2 pi, well, we haven't plugged in a value yet. Uh, let's, how about um, y double prime of 3 pi over 2? That's between pi and 2 pi. We have negative sine of 3 pi over 2, which is uh, negative negative 1, which is 1, which is positive. So this is concave up from pi to 2 pi. In this slide, we are given the definition of a point of inflection. A point where the graph of a function has a tangent line, so if we have a tangent line at a point, and where the concavity changes is a point of inflection. And we found in the previous slide where uh, the second derivative is zero. That's where point of inflections occur. So if we have a graph that's concave down, and then changes concavity and now is concave up, the second derivative will be zero there, and that's where uh, there will be a point of inflection because the concavity has changed. In example three, we're finding points of inflection of the function y equals e to the negative x squared. So let's find the first derivative. The first derivative is negative 2x e to the negative x squared. And the second derivative is, well, we're going to have to use the product rule. We have two functions here. So we have first times the derivative of the second. And we know what that is, we just took the derivative of that, plus the second times derivative of the first, which is negative 2 e to the negative x squared. Uh, well, uh, we can factor out, uh, well, let's simplify first. We have 4x e to the negative x squared uh, minus 2 e to the negative x squared. We can factor out an e to the negative x squared. Oh, this will be 4x squared, by the way, x times x. You can still factor out an e to the negative x squared, and we have 4x squared minus 2. 
Now we can't, there is no value that makes E zero. So we are going to uh, just find the zero of this part right here. We have four x squared minus two equal to zero. Uh, we add two, divide by four, which is one half. And then x is plus or minus the square root of one half. Now since we're asked to find points of inflections, I need an x and a y. So I have positive square root of one half, comma something, and negative square root of one half, comma something. Now we have to plug these back into the original function. So we have, uh, looks like one over e to the one half, or one over the square root of e. If we plug the square root of one half in here and square it, we get one half, but then this will be negative, uh, making it one over the square root of e. And then if we plug negative square root of one half, uh, this, the square uh, will do the exact same thing. So we get one over the square root of e again. Of course, we can write this as the square root of e as well. Well, if we look at uh, the graph of this function, we see that the positive square root of one half is over here. There's a point of inflection. And the y is one over e to the one half. And for negative square root of one half, there's another point of inflection over here with the exact same y value, which is still one over the square root of e. Reading the graph of the derivative, the graph of the derivative of function f on the interval negative four to four is shown in figure 425. Here it is right here. Answer the following questions about f, justifying each answer with information obtained from the graph of f prime. We have to remember this is the graph of f prime. On what intervals is f increasing? The function increases where the first derivative is positive. So the first derivative is positive from negative four to negative two. So we have a bracket here. It's definitely positive up, up here. Negative four to negative two. And the velocity is our, the first derivative is zero at negative two. So we're not gonna include that. We're gonna union that with two to zero. Uh, excuse me, not two to the zero, but uh, we could rather do two to one two to one. And so the first derivative is positive all along this curve with the exception of one point. Uh, so we are supposed to, uh, we're supposed to justify each answer. How do we know this? F prime is greater than zero. It's positive. On what intervals is the graph of F concave up? So now the slopes of the tangent lines of this graph represents the second derivative. And we want to know uh, where the slope of the tangent lines are positive to be concave up. So from two to, let's say it happens at zero, we have positive slopes of the tangent lines. So first of all, we have two to zero. Then the tangent lines change and they're negative, negative, they, they're, keep, they're negative until we get to three. And then the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. So then union with three to four. Now, how do we know that? Uh, we got to justify this. Slopes of tangent lines to f prime, that's a big deal, not just slopes of tangent lines, but the slopes of the tangent lines to f prime are greater than zero, or we could even say f double prime is greater than zero. That's how we know the function will be concave up. At which x coordinates does f have local extrema? Well, we'll have mins and maxes where the first derivative changes signs. So, or, you know, where the first derivative is zero, but then it has to change signs over that zero. So our, our candidates for a local extrema are negative two and one, and of course the endpoints, negative four and four. So we, we definitely have the endpoints, x equals four uh, plus or minus four. And how do we know that? Uh, well, those are endpoints. And graph decreases. No, it doesn't de decrease. It increases. Increases after negative 4, because the first derivative is positive. Yeah, the first derivative is decreasing, but uh, since the first derivative is positive, the graph, the original graph, will be actually increasing. And, uh, and I'm going to come down here. This is letter C. And uh, graph uh, decreases to 4. 
Now let's talk about negative 2. The first derivative is 0 here, but the graph does not change, the, the derivative does not change signs over this point. It increases to this point, and then after this point it continues to increase. That does not create a local extrema. But at 1, the first derivative is positive, and then on the other side, the first derivative is negative. So this graph increases to 1 and then decreases after. So that's a local extrema. So the other one is x equals 1. D, what are the x-coordinates of all points of inflection in the graph of f? Well, this is where the second derivative changes signs. Now, since we have the first derivative graphed, we want to know where the slope of the tangent lines change signs. And that's going to happen at negative 2. The slopes are negative on the left and positive on the right. Uh, at 0, the slopes are pos uh, positive on the left, negative on the right. And then again at 3, the slopes are negative on the left, positive on the right. So letter D, we have x equals negative 2, 0, and 3 are points of inflection. Now how do we know that? The first derivative changes signs. On letter E, we are asked to graph uh, or represent a possible graph of this function. Now, since we don't really have an anchor point, we can start this graph pretty much anywhere we want. Let's say that the original graph started down here at negative 4. Well, the graph is going to increase because the first derivative is positive, but it's concave down because the second derivative is negative. So we need increasing and concave down until we hit 2. So there we hit 2 right here. And then we need increasing still, but now we're concave up until we get to 0. We'll be concave up until we get to 0. So maybe it goes up until we hit about this point right here. And then it's going to be concave down until we hit 1 where we're going to uh, we're going to increase and then we're going to decrease, but it's going to remain concave down. So we're increasing to 1 and then we change concavity and now we're decreasing until we hit 3 which point will still decrease but now we are concave up so there's a possible graph right there we can use the second derivative to test for actual local extrema if f prime of c is 0 then we either have a min or a max but if the second derivative is less than 0 negative, then f has a local maximum at c. So if the first derivative is 0, then we have a local min or a maximum. So there's that point where the first derivative is 0. It's either a maximum or a min. Well, if the second derivative is negative, that means this thing is concave down. Well, not only do we have a min or a max there, it turns out to be a maximum because of the concavity. Likewise, if the first derivative is 0, we have a point uh, where we have a min or a max, and if the second derivative is positive, that means this graph is concave up here, and that would create a local minimum. So here's a specific example, example 7. Find the local extreme values of f of x. Well, the first derivative is 3x squared minus 12, and we, uh, if we set this equal to 0, we'll see where the local mins and maxes are. So we have 3x squared equals 12, x squared equals 4. So we have uh, mins or maxes at plus and minus 2. Well, if we find the second derivative, we can check the concavity, and then we'll know whether these are mins or maxes. The second derivative is 6x. So if we plug 2 into the second derivative, we get 12. So that means at the point uh, where we have a min or max at 2, this is uh, graph will be concave up, therefore creating a minimum. So, so far we have uh, a minimum at x equals 2, at least local. Then if we plug negative 2 into our second derivative, we get 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12. So now at the point where we have a min or max at negative 2, the graph is concave down, so we have a local max at x equals negative 2. In example 8, we're going to use the first and second derivatives to graph f. Let the first derivative be 4x to the third minus 12x squared. 
we're going to identify where the extreme of f occur, where the extrema. So if we set this equal to 0, 4x to the third minus 12x squared equals 0, we can factor out an x squared, and we get 4x minus 12. So x equals 0, and x equals, you know, add 12, divide by 4, x equals 3. Identify where the extreme of f occurred. Done that. B. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and the intervals on which f is decreasing. So we can put this on a number line. The first derivative is 0 at 0 and 3. So we want to test points that are in between. Let's test negative 1, let's test 1, and let's test 4 into the first derivative for increasing and decreasing. If I plug negative 1 into the first derivative, we get negative 4 minus 12, of course, times 1. So negative 4 minus 12, that's negative. So this graph is decreasing. If I plug 1 in, I get 4 minus 12, and it's still decreasing. If we plug 4 in, I get 16 minus 12, and now we know the graph is increasing uh, from 3 to infinity. On, so we got to answer the question, B, decreasing from negative infinity to 0, union with 0 to 3, and increasing from 3 to infinity. Letter C asks us to find where the graph of F is concave up and where it is concave down. So we're going to have to take the second derivative. We have 12x squared minus 24x, set that equal to 0. We can factor out a 12x, which leaves x minus 2. So uh, points of inflection could be x equals 0 and x equals 2. So now here's our points of inflection. Let's find out if we have any points of inflection. So we have uh, 0, and I could have made this line number line a little straighter, but eh, good enough. So uh, Here's our possible points of inflection. So let's test negative 1, let's test 1, and let's test 3. So if I plug negative 1 into the second derivative, I get negative 12 times negative 3, which is positive. So this thing is concave up. If I plug 1 in, I get uh, 12 times negative 1. So this is concave down. And then plug 3 in, I get, uh, what, 36 times 1, and this is concave up. So we actually have uh, two points of inflection, at 0 and at 2. In letter D, we're asked to graph this function, what it could look like. Now, we don't have an anchor point, so we can put our anchor point pretty much wherever we want. We, want, we can start this graph wherever we like. Now, our points of interest are 0, 0, 2, and 3. So this function is going to decrease from negative infinity all the way to 3, but it's going to change concavity over 0 and 2. So this function is decreasing and concave up from negative infinity to 0. So decreasing and concave up till we get to 0. Once we hit 0, the function is still decreasing but concave down until we get to 2. So concave down until we get to 2. And then once we hit 2, it's concave up and still decreasing until we get to 3. So now it's concave up, but still decreasing. Now once we hit 3, this function is concave up now, but increasing. Concave up and increasing. So this could be a potential graph for the information that we have.